Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. We're so happy to have you with us this morning for morning worship. It's fun to look out and recognize almost every face. Um, I've been here about three months now, so it's a lovely feeling this morning. Thank you for gathering with us. Um, first of all, let's wave to our online worshipers, greet them, and thanks for worshiping with us this morning. Hey. <laughs> Lovely to have you with us. Um, come on in, everybody. Uh, the radio and online services are given in memory of Myra and Anne May this morning. From Del Thelke, Scott Thelke, Jane and Steve Rexted, and eight um, step-grandchildren. So thanks for giving the radio and online services to all of those folks. Um, we have a special birthday to celebrate this morning. It is Aaron Will's birthday. Is Aaron here? Hey, happy birthday, Aaron. <laughs> so that's wonderful. How old are you today, Aaron? 13 years old. Amazing. Into the teens. <laughs> um. Next, we just want to give thanks to our choir gathered over here. Let's give us some round of applause to them as well. Preemptive applause, because they're going to sound great. Um, but they are singing in memory of Lynn Adams. Their anthems are raising in memory of Lynn Adams this morning, um, who won't sing in the choir as well. So thanks to those. Um, this Monday, tomorrow, we have 5.30 Cooking with Grace, so you're all welcome to come by tomorrow evening for um, supper together. It's not dinner. Dinner is around noon. <laughs> I'm still learning that. <laughs> so we'll have supper at 5.30 tomorrow night. <laughs> um, and finally, we have Christmas coming up already, which is hard to believe with no snow. Um, but those services, you can always follow along with your announcements on the purple sheet as well. But we have no morning worship on Christmas Eve, so no fourth Sunday of Advent, no Christmas Eve morning worship. But then at 3 and 4.30, there will be uh, evening candlelight services here um, on Christmas Eve, as well as a combined um, Christmas morning worship here at 10 a.m., and Providence Valley will be worshiping Christmas Eve um, out there at 4.30. So hope you can join us for Christmas as well. And finally, if you uh, flip to the back of your announcements, we just want to raise thanks for um, all those who gave Christmas trees um, in the baptismal area, narthex, uh, the candles, all the different decorations for Advent. So thanks to everyone listed here in the announcements. Um, and with that, we have our call to worship with the choir. So thanks again for gathering, and um, welcome to this time of worship.
Continuing with our worship, we have a time of confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who comes to wake us up from sleep, who leads us into the light of grace. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, to, for whom we wait, we confess we have not prepared for your merciful reign among us. We ignore our neighbors in need and fail in the labor of justice and peace. In your mercy, forgive us. Grant us wisdom to welcome your light and to seek the things that will endure until Christ comes again in glory. Amen. God prepares in our hearts a royal highway for his Son's near approach and cleanses us from all our sins. He drives away the darkness of sin and death that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of your prophets, that, anointed by your Spirit, we may testify to your light, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the lighting of our third Advent candle. of God which surpasses all understanding, the love of Christ that guards our hearts and minds, and the joy and constellation of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. When God's people were surrounded by hardship, suffering, and grief, Isaiah proclaimed, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. Some of us come today as people who are also surrounded by suffering and grief, and yet the Spirit hovers among us, tendering and anointing inspiration and freedom declaring blessings in places the world has cursed and igniting great joy where mourning and heartache prevail. We wait as people who expire hardship and pain, yet we are called to witness to, to the persistent joy that sustains our life as God's people. We light these candles as signs of our shocking hope, just peace, and fierce joy. May our lives shine with the fierce, tenacious joy of the light, 
who lives in our heart as we wait and work for the coming of God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Amen.
Good morning. The first lesson is from Isaiah, chapter 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former des devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself out with a garland, and a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
second lesson is from 1 Thess Thessalonians chapter 5. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything. Hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. And may your spirit and soul and body be kept sound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. The word of the Lord. And speak to God. Stand with me for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel this morning is a reading from uh, St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now there was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? And he confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? And he answered, No. And then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? And he said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had sent from the Pharisee now they had been sent from the Pharisees, and they asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize you with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know. 
the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. And this took place at Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated. Well, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our precious Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I was just uh, thinking the other day how it is is that we need power, power to do pretty much everything in this life. We require it. Sometimes the power comes from within, but often we need external power. In many cases, this external power is supplied for us by something that they call electricity. Have you ever heard of that before? Electricity. And thank you for listening. <laughs> and uh, we are uh, connected uh, to that source of power. However, when a direct connection to electricity is not possible, then there is this marvelous invention called a battery. Do you know what a battery is? Take out your cell phones just for a moment. You don't hear that too often in church. Uh, just take out your cell phone and check the power on your battery. Doesn't that just irritate you a little bit when you uh, lose power on your battery or you just have a little bit of power, power left on your battery? Batteries um, are now so widely used that uh, they can be found in, in uh, almost every place, varying from large ones in places like electric cars uh, to even uh, tiny ones. Uh, those of you who have hearing aids have little batteries, right, in, um, in your hearing aid. But as electric power is consumed, the, the batteries decline in their power, and then they will eventually require what? You got to recharge them. You got to recharge your batteries. Uh, and even though the manufacturers of some batteries advertise that their products last longer, I've never heard any of them claim that their batteries last forever. All right, you got to replace those batteries from time to time. You have to recharge those, those batteries. Duracell is what, the copper top battery keeps going, or the Energizer Bunny, right? Uh, keeps going and going and going and going, but eventually that Energizer bu Bunny is going to stop, stop going. My father-in-law had a battery-powered device inserted uh, in his chest to regulate the performance of his defective heart. And the technician said that it would keep operating, they thought, for, for maybe 10 years before that battery would need to be replaced. Uh, and every so often he would go and get that, uh, 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 in, go in for a checkup, you know, to, to check out the device. And they could tell him then how much longer he had remaining on that device that was inserted into his chest. And and amazingly, the technician was also able to read any occurrence uh, of when his heart malfunctioned, uh, giving the exact time and the duration of that. That testing machine also measured the length of time that the battery would continue to operate. Our faith, your faith, my faith, our faith, has a, a source of power that doesn't diminish like a normal battery does. Our faith, your faith and my faith, continues to strengthen itself with use. The more we share the love of Jesus with others, the stronger our faith is and the stronger we get, even as our physical strength declines. So, yeah, it's important to keep our cell phones charged, right? But it's also important to keep our souls charged as well. Charging through all of those uh, times when challenges come to us. I, I think that there is a part of 
this season of the year, you know, getting ready for Christmas and, and all the beautiful stuff that that entails. I mean, it's wonderful, but I think this time can also leave many of us feeling a little depleted from time to time. I mean, I can run myself ragged going from meeting to appointment, to party, to dinners, out uh, to the store. I mean, these things are not unenjoyable. The majority of this running around, at least for me, is fulfilling and it's, and it's fun, but it can also deplete my battery. And, and there is not a lot of in-between time to recharge, to to come back to life, to get batteries. I, and I imagine that maybe you have a similar problem as well. My motivation is that deep down somewhere, I am utterly convinced that if I do not visit every hospital patient, if I don't make every sick call, if I don't return every email, answer every phone message, go to every appointment and invitation, attend every event, say yes to every invitation, check off everyone on my Christmas list before this next week and entertain every ounce of criticism that comes my way, no matter how baseless, that I will somehow ruin something, or maybe worse yet, ruin someone, to fall in my calling as a pastor, to fall in my calling as a husband or as a dad or as just a citizen of Dawson or a member of this church. And I don't want to fail in those callings. In other words, I sometimes am utterly convinced that it's all up to me. And so I pour myself into things in, in the, the proud attempt to save whatever it is that I think needs saving. And this season, for as beautiful and wonderful as it is, brings out these stresses in new ways. And I have to say that sometimes my battery just gets a little drained from time to time. And I wonder if yours does too. That sometimes you just need to recharge, to recharge that, that battery for much of the same reason. Have you worked yourself to death yet trying to be everything in this season of joy? Have you worked yourself to death trying to save things that aren't in your ability to save? Is your battery gone? Well, today we once again turn to the wisdom of that old school prophet, John the Baptist. We met him last week, and we get to hear him again this week. John the Baptist, we get to hear his guidance on the cause and cure for battery depletion, we might say. And he does not disappoint. Look at the way he answers the questions of the priests and the Levites. They ask him, are you the Messiah? And what does John the Baptist say? Nope. No. Are you Elijah? They inquire. And his response is the same. His witty, nope, I am not. And on and on these questions go without John the Baptist expending more voice on the issue than necessary. He just says, no, I'm not. Nope. Not the Messiah. I'm not Elijah. I mean, John the Baptist should get a job instructing witnesses how to testify in court, I think. He is so adept at only answering the question asked. But why do you think he has such a quick reply? You see, John the Baptist knows something that 
I think we too all quickly forget. In this season, he's not the Messiah. He's not God. And I'll say that one more time because we may be too busy, you may be too busy to hear this as well. You are not God. You are not the Messiah. I'm not, and neither are you. We can't be everything to everyone. We can't be all things to all people. And that's never truer than in this season of get it done before the year's end, right? Because as much as I'd like to please people, I'm not able to please everyone. Because as much as I'd like to be perfect, I have to remind myself that I'm made out of the same carbon as a lump of coal. Remember that you are dust, Scripture reminds us, and to dust you shall return. Because as much as I'd like to save everything to be its Savior, I can't. And neither can you. It's not me. It's not you. John knew that, and we should relearn it. John knew that his job was not to save anything, but rather in everything that he did to point toward the God who had already started taking care of the whole saving business. And in that same vein, let's imagine just for a moment that that you put down the need to save that thing that you are most worried about, that thing that you are overthinking. Put it down just for a moment. Just lay it down. Put it down and let the Savior be the Savior. Let Jesus be Jesus just for a moment. Put it down Give it up to God and feel that battery of yours once again recharge. Give it up. Give it up and feel that battery recharge. So often I think that our batteries are dead because we're doing work that we aren't meant to do. We're trying to save things that aren't ours to save. We've forgotten what John the Baptist knew, that we are the children of God, not God. We are God's children. We are made in the image of God, not the other way around. My job is not to be Jesus, but to point to him and rely on him. Your job at your workplace and in your homes, with your family, with your relationships, or even for this Christmas is not to be everything to everyone. It's not to be perfect. It's not to be Jesus, but it's to point to Jesus and to rely on Jesus. And that has been a freeing revel revelation for me to realize again, even just recently, because it has allowed me to put down some things that I've been carrying some voices that want me to be someone that I can't. I'm not Jesus. I just point to him in my work and in my play. Or at least that is what I try to do. But for you, what critical voices are in your workplace? What critical voices are in your relationships, in your life, that you should now just put down, just lay them down? What work is not yours to bear any longer? We need to relearn what John the Baptist knew, don't you think? We need to relearn these things. He was not the Messiah, but only pointed to him 
and relied on him. We are not God. We cannot be everything in this world. We can only point to the God who loves us enough to be with us in this world. And when we stick to that identity, I think we find that our batteries will be full. When we well know that our identities are as children of God. When we know this, we're not God, we are God's children. Then our batteries may wane from time to time, but they will never deplete. And when we live out of that identity, rather than trying to be the one born in a manger, which you're not and I'm not, then I have a hunch that our running around is less rushed because we know it's not up to us. We're just showing up at the scene where God is already at work saving the world. And as we lean toward Christmas, may we remember this. In these words of Jesus that come later in this Gospel of John, if the Son has made you free, then you are free indeed. Amen. We'll stand now together for the prayers of the church. Graced by God's presence among us, and gathered together, let us pray for the church, all of our hearts, and abide in the Savior's love. God, we celebrate the third Sunday of Advent today, a day of joy and rejoicing. If it is what we need today, God, please fill us with jubilance. Help us smile, laugh, dance. Experience your uplifting love. And God, if it is what we need today, hold us in your constant joy. Remind us that joy can accompany us in any chapter of life, any challenge, any hardship. Fill us with the joy that comes simply from being known and beloved by you. Whether or not we have the strength to smile, laugh, or dance today. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspiring Spirit, we pray for the church you create. Thank you for calling every single one of us to ministry, service, and love out of your great love. Help us remember that while we gather in churches, the church is the body of Christ. The church is us. The church is people enlivened by your spirit. Call us to worship you and share in the sacraments and send us out to carry your gracious light into a weary world. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, remind us that we belong to a global family and injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We extend our hearts to all refugees and immigrants today, God, and trust your accompaniment of our neighbors fleeing amidst conflict. We lift up neighbors in Colombia and Panama, Palestine, Israel, Ukraine, Russia, Myanmar, Libya, South Sudan, Ethiopia, and everywhere people seek safety. Jesus, our Advent image of you is peaceful, seeing you lying in a warm manger. Help us remember you entered into the world amidst terrifying conflict as well, and still today abide with and care for all affected by disruption and violence. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we thank you for your continued accompaniment alongside our friends, family, and neighbors who are grieving, sick, or otherwise in need. God, thank you for your continued comforting love alongside Maggie, Roger, Wayne, Weldon, Don, 
Karen, Mike, Rick, David, John, Tammy, David, Brad, Tom, Jack, Lauren, Joey, Jim, Monica, and Jennifer. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Christ Jesus, you who are entering the world this season and will come again, you who have already entered, lived, and redeemed, encourage us. Bless all of us as we embrace the chill of winter. Help us help others who do not have a warm place to stay. Bless the fields as they rest. Gently remind everyone of your constant presence this season, God. Christ, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Amen. And now continuing in our worship, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now we continue with our offering. Please be seated.
us pray. We give thanks, O giver of life, for all the gifts you bestow upon us every moment of every day. Help us to recognize the source of our lives, our blessings, and our very being. Take these small tokens of our thanks and bless them so that they might be a blessing to others. In the name of the greatest gift of all, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught us, using the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the gracious Lord Jesus Christ bless you, keep you, and hold you in his grace today, through the rest of the afternoon, into the evening. Hi. And on towards Christmas, <laughs> I invite you to cross the cross on your forehead as we close. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God.